There's an inherent problem with democracy. Actually, it's definitional. It's this. Everyone gets to vote. Michael Voris, what are we going to do with you? I have a warm place in my heart for Michael because one of my first videos was a response to his take on the Catholic Church clergy sex abuse scandal a few months back. Since then, I haven't really paid much attention to his YouTube channel, so I was pleasantly surprised to have him brought back to my attention a few days ago when PZ Myers on his blog put up a link to a video that Michael had just posted entitled Catholic Government. Consider for a moment, the informed get to vote. Those who have studied the candidates and issues and consider the impact on not only themselves but the society at large. But in addition to the informed, the ignorant get to vote as well. Those who have studied nothing and don't care about anything except themselves and their own narrow interests. Now, that right there is not such an uncommon sentiment. It's foolish and undemocratic, but it's not uncommon. Most of us who have ever talked politics with our friends or our relatives have heard this kind of grousing before. It's not a very serious argument against democracy because as long as we wish to live in a free society where the government is empowered by and ultimately accountable to the people, everybody needs to get a vote. We all need to have an equal say at the ballot box. There's just no getting around it. Limiting the franchise to so-called informed voters creates all sorts of problems, not the least of which being that an entire segment of the population, those branded uninformed, would now be affected by decisions in which they had absolutely no input. And it becomes an even darker prospect once you realize exactly what Michael means by uninformed voters. Imagine the scene. Two voters walking into voting booths side by side. One casts a vote with an eye to improving the society at large by rolling back abortion, defending traditional marriage, reducing government's ability to crush families with heavy taxation, etc. Such a voter casts his vote with an eye to the common good, the authentic common good what's best for the culture as a whole. Right next to him is a voter who doesn't give a hoot about society at large. All he cares about is his own selfish, selfish interest of ensuring abortion stays legal so he can have sex with no consequences, or have his decision to have sex with another man celebrated as a right. Such a voter exhibits little else than an adolescent preoccupation with self-absorption. And imagine, he actually gets to vote. So, Michael has a problem with abortion and homosexuality. So much of a problem that he doesn't think people who want to keep abortion legal or favor treating gay people like people should be allowed to vote. But that's all just belly aching, though, right? He's in a bad mood. They legalize gay marriage in Mexico. The Mohammedans are building an Al-Qaeda victory mosque at Ground Zero in New York. He's had a bad couple of months. But he can't really be anti-democracy, can he? For God's sakes, our democratic principles, our guarantees of free speech and free practice of religion are the very things that allow him to publicly criticize our system without fear of reprisal or censorship. He can't really have a problem with that, can he? Ruthless men and women who, knowing human nature very well, and thereby the means to control and manipulate it, wield great influence over the selfish masses. They, con they connive and scheme their way to power by appealing to the most base level of human ignorance, namely, the appeal to a false sense of liberty. Okay, it's a little better. Admittedly, it is a bit weird to hear criticism of people appealing to the crudest, most base instincts of their intended audience coming from Michael Voris. Just like it's a little weird to hear him mention false liberty when his religion teaches that the only true freedom comes from serving God, who commands you to serve him, by the way. I never understood that. But he makes a decent argument here. Calling out pandering politicians is a much better way of criticizing democracy than complaining about stupid people getting to vote. Still a bit lacking in self-awareness, but he's gradually coming around. See, Michael, he thinks about babies being aborted or men making hot, sweet, sweaty love to other men, and he just gets pissed off. He shoots his mouth off. But once he cools off, starts thinking about it, he starts talking a bit more sense. It just takes him a little while to pull him. The only way to prevent a democracy from committing suicide is to limit the vote to faithful Catholics.
the whole idea of democracy is little less than an experiment doomed to failure from the outset. So you're not a libertarian because you have a big problem with gay marriage. You've complained about taxation and public assistance to the poor, so you're not a socialist. And you're not a Democrat either. What's left? The only way to run a country is by benevolent dictatorship. A Catholic monarch who protects his people from themselves and bestows on them what they need, not necessarily what they want. So you're a monarchist? A Catholic monarchist? If you think about it, this is exactly how the universe is governed. No, it's not. <laughs> if you think about it, it's really not. Michael Voris is a Roman Catholic, but thankfully he doesn't speak for most American Catholics on this topic. Most Catholics I know wouldn't want to live under any kind of a dictatorship, because that's what an absolute monarchy is, a dictatorship. They much prefer living under a constitution with laws devised and enacted by elected representatives to living under any king or queen, even a Catholic one. I have my problems with Catholicism. I think that the church's behavior pertaining to the clergy sex abuse scandal has been disgusting and inexcusable. And more fundamentally, even though the Catholic Church is, relatively speaking, one of the more modern and progressive of the world's major religious denominations, it still considers putting on a condom or swallowing a birth control pill to be a sin, practices sexual discrimination against women, and teaches that God is so grossed out by boys kissing boys that he sends people to hell for it. These things bother me, but they bother some Catholics too. Most of the Catholics I know are reasonable people. They don't share the contempt for democracy expressed by Michael Voris in that video. They don't wish for some Catholic autocrat to tell them how to live. In fact, their attitude toward government and religion is probably a lot closer to this guy's than to Michael Voris. But let me stress again that these are my views. For contrary to common newspaper usage, I am not the Catholic candidate for president. I am the Democratic Party's candidate for president, who happens also to be a Catholic. I do not speak for my church on public matters, and the church does not speak for me. I have this mental image of Michael Voris watching that John Kennedy speech, and when Kennedy gets to the part where he says that he's not the Catholic candidate, he's the Democratic candidate, Michael Voris draws a revolver and blows a hole in the TV Elvis style. Anyway. Since the Catholic government video was posted last week, Michael has produced two subsequent videos in which he claims to apologize and clarify his point, among other things. When I suggested the phrase, a benevolent dictator, I could have been a little more precise. A better use of terms would have been a Catholic monarchy. Yep, that's the ticket, a Catholic monarchy. And just for clarity, let's repeat so everyone understands. Western civilization would be better off if it were a Catholic monarchy. Well, that brought out all those sad sack boo birds. Atheist zealots have descended on real Catholic TV with all the enmity of Satan himself. By the way, they may not believe in him now, but they will. I won't repeat some of the extreme blasphemy uttered about our blessed Lord in the Eucharist, but suffice it to say, it is filled with expletives and the most coarse language available to the vocabulary challenged atheist set. I misstated or did not state clearly and simply said some things incorrectly and they were wrong and they didn't help support the much larger point I was trying to make. For those mistakes and things that weren't said very clearly, you have my apologies. I did a poor job of making the larger point that I wanted to make. That poor communication on my part caused the bigger point, which I never really enunciated, to be lost in many side discussions. And again, that's my fault and you have my apology. No matter what form of government a country has, the lives people will live under that government will depend on the quality of virtue, the virtue of the governed and the virtue of the governing. So there you are. When Michael said, the only way to prevent a democracy from committing suicide is to limit the vote to faithful Catholics. And the only way to run a country is by benevolent dictatorship, a Catholic monarch. And 
Western civilization would be better off if it were a Catholic monarchy. He was only trying to say that a democratic government can only be as virtuous as the people who elect it. Makes perfect sense. And here I thought he was some kind of a fanatic. <laughs> By the way, that original video, the Catholic government video, has mysteriously disappeared from Real Catholic TV's YouTube channel. Don't worry, I uploaded a copy of it to mine. See, since I'm talking about that video here, quoting from it, showing clips from it, I think it's very important that anyone watching this be able to go back and watch that original video in its entirety, unaltered, for themselves. If anyone watching this can't go back and verify on their own that I haven't taken things out of context and I haven't misrepresented what was said in that original video, then they have no reason to take anything I've said here the least bit seriously. Right, Michael?